is some sweet ash lumber. Hey everybody, welcome back to the sawmill. On the bed right now we have a piece of ash. This end 20 inches, that far end another 20 inches. It's pretty straight and true. It has a little bit of a flare on the bottom end which uh, has been trimmed and we turned it over so we could get a nice level uh, set. We're gonna try and cut some five quarter out of this today. We think it's got some nice character and some nice grain, at least we're hoping. Uh, this tree came off of a job site that we were working on, we had a good windstorm come through, and the very next day we showed up and part of the driveway where the client is going to drive and try and get access to the garage had the upper crown of the tree, this one specifically, laying in it. The rest of the tree was left laying on the cliff uh, and the homeowner was just going to leave it there. On the butt end, after we climbed down to actually take a look at it, it was 30 plus inches. We were able to harvest three decent sized pieces. Hopefully, we're going to cut it up and find some nice stuff inside. As always, thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. Time to get to it. Gonna take you on a little ride. So this is a four degree blade that we're running with very little lube. And you can see how nice and clear the grain is. I mean, barely any type of knots or defect. It's a really pretty log. Um, let me put you back where you go. Uh, if you've used ash to make anything, you know, it's a really nice wood to work with. Uh, the grain really pops when you put some darker stain to it. It's one of my favorite woods. Uh, like I said, it's just easy to work with, and it just it has a lot of character when you uh, when you sand it, treat it, and you know put a clear coat of poly on it. It's a it's a good looking wood. Not to mention it's really rugged. Uh, I gotta turn it over. So because I know we dragged this out over gravel and through dirt and everything else like that, as much as we tried to lift it and keep it out of the, the muck and all the other garbage, still keeping an eye out on it so that we don't run the blade into it. Uh, again, it's a four degree blade. And if you can see on the log road, what we did was, 
before the weather turned and we started getting snow and uh, rain and everything else like that again, we covered it with tarps, cut down on some of the prep time for us as far as trying to thaw the logs and everything else like that. So far, the four degree blades are working really well on the maple, ash, and other hardwoods that we're cutting, all right? Sorry, I'm gonna take you in a ride again. So, on this end, we ended up cutting off a limb that looked like it was rotted, but it left a lot of really nice color. Let me turn so the camera shadow isn't in it. But, mm, trying. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of character in that. And some really nice color around that limb. And like I said, this thing is just ridiculously clear. All right, back to where you belong. Cutting down into this, it looks like this limb detail with the dark wood and then the nice figure and the curl in it is going to continue at least into another two of the cuts. We're going to cut these next couple pieces at 10 quarter, see if the figure travels, and then for people who are making furniture, benches, uh, tables, those kind of things, those specific details, the dark with the light and then the figure is considered you know a bonus and what they're actually looking for these are the kind of decisions you have to make on the fly at when you're sawing um, again the intent was to do everything five quarter but if you're finding this we're gonna cut some ten quarter see what it looks like and then go from there Look at that. Look at how pretty. That is gonna make a super nice piece for somebody. It runs all the way down, right through it. Every once in a while, you do make the right call.
Look at how pretty that is. That is some sweet ash lumber. So believe it or not, after all that cutting, we finally got into the pith of the log. Uh, small defect on this end and one sort of in the middle over here. So we're gonna roll it over one time, see if I can get a good clean flitch out of the other side. And then we'll see what happens to the middle piece that has the pith still left in it. That's why you don't stand in the bed on that side when you're rolling stuff over. cuts because this is the piece that has the pith in it or the majority of the pith in it I decided to go back to five quarter the last two slices this may stay together it may not but I think it was worth the cut that's five quarter I don't think anybody's gonna have an issue with that you can see how pretty it is how much character it's got um, a lot of color and just a lot of figure all over the place uh, I think uh, made the right call for once about uh, changing the slicing and, and outcome of the log that you know we thought we were going to get. Um, just an item of note that I wanted to say, when we harvested this log and salvaged it off of the cliff, the ends were sealed, and I know this is repetitive, but the ends were sealed within an hour of it getting cut, and for ash, for hickory, for cherry, all those logs, if you let them go even a day, and I know it sounds crazy, but even a day, 24 hours, you'll notice shake, split, and I mean some to the point of opening the log completely up, and it ends up in a huge amount of loss. You can see from this piece, and again, sometimes you get lucky, but you can see from this piece, sealing the logs is such a key ingredient if you're gonna actually maximize the yield when you go to cut things. 
So keep that in mind. If somebody's bringing you logs or if you're cutting logs or you're recutting the ends, seal it immediately. And it doesn't have to be fancy, quick, dirty, just get them coated. Uh, it makes a huge difference. I'm gonna go to that camera. Well, my first log of the year turned out to be a really nice surprise. Super happy with the pieces that came out. Uh, some really, really nice character and figure and almost every piece, you know, is defect free. Uh, even the pith cut is pretty clean. Um, we'll see if they stay that way. We'll sticker them up and get them drying. But uh, yeah, couldn't ask for anything more out of the log. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. We really do appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, but it really, really helps us out. Uh, and as always, be safe, be well, until we see you on the next one. All right? Thanks, guys. See ya.